This episode is brought to you by KG Productions for Krishna Nose. We are continuing the Narad Bhakti Sutra we had done till verse 14. That is Sutra 14 we had done. So today we are going to describe about the different sages and what do they think about this aspect called devotion. Now everybody's yardstick is different. Now all the sages that we are discussing over here have a certain different aspect of devotion. How do they describe it? So one one verse only, just about one line will be there. So Sutra 15. We are doing Narad Bhakti Sutra. Sutra 15. Bhakti's characteristics are being described now due to the existence of different opinions. If you have to ask every individual, can you please tell me what is this devotion all about? Or how do you describe devotion? Everybody is going to give their own version of it. Remember, devotion is about unconditional love for Lord. So, what is this unconditional love for the Lord? How do you actually understand this love? So, if you have to ask every individual, can you describe love to me? And you know very well that hardly anybody can understand it. Though everybody will try their level best into using their yardstick for description. They will say that, you know, the love that I have for my mother, somebody will say the love that I have for my dog, somebody will say the love that I have for the animals, somebody will say I am a doctor, so I, you know, I am very careful about my patients. Everybody's yardstick is going to differ. Even in the sages, the sages themselves, remember, they are the repository of knowledge. But how is their knowledge different? Just like the scientist. You ask one scientist about one aspect, he is going to tell you one point of view, another will tell you another point of view, then another will tell you another point of view. Simply, if you wish to give a gift, to your beloved. What is the gift that you will give? I'm sure you remember the story of the Maga, Maggie or Magai or whatever. Everybody's love differs. So also these sages and the saints, they also have a different aspect and they are going to talk to the existence of different opinions. So let us begin with the first one. Now, what does Ved Vyas say? So, Sutra 16 says, In the worship of the Lord with deep love and firm attachment, thus declared the son of Parashar, Sri Ved Vyas. Now, if you recollect, Ved Vyas is a great person who has written the Mahabharat, and he is also described the various aspects of love in the Bhagavatam. It's a massive thing. Right from beginning of the Bhagavatam till the end, there are different, different stories which he has given us. Now, how did that come about? I am sure all of you remember my previous satsangs. I think we did nearly five to six years of the Bhagavatam, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And it spoke about the different, different aspects where the Lord comes on the earth in different forms and He expresses His love. As Sri Ram, he was a great prince. 
for the sake of love he left the kingdom and went into the jungles for the sake of love he fought with the king of lanka to get his wife back and for the sake of love he had to abandon her also now it sounds very harsh what he did but then as a ruler he is the king of everybody in ayodhya so his justification is different we cannot understand the justification of shri ram as a person ram was completely different than shri krishna now if you look at shri krishna's life it is completely a different ball game altogether he is the highest in love right we are going to describe his love in the next couple of verses how does he and the people who are associated with him express their love now ved vyas also spoke about this then in another avatar of vishnu parshuram his love for his father and his mother imagine parshuram had to chop off his mother's head at the behest of his guru his father he said chop her off and then he said now bring her back to life parshuram's fight with sahasrahar arjun it's a very big story that is completely a different kind of a love it cannot be expressed one cannot be expressed and said that this is higher or that is higher or that is high nobody can say that so in the worship of lord with deep love and firm attachment ved vyas says these are the words that describe it your attachments in the material world with your own family relatives friends whomsoever that they are there are deep rooted today if somebody says something against your country you are very angry somebody says something against your religion you get very angry and upset likewise if someone says something about your mother or father naturally you get upset people will fight for their wives they will take on the whole world this is a deep rooted attachment that a person has for that individual like today if you see even in the alma mater where you know you are connected to your schools many of you have still retained relationship with your school friends also haven't you and when you are related to them you are talking to them about how you spent your days in school and then you go for the annual days get togethers kind of the love is different there what are you expressing you are expressing a kind of an attachment to your alma mater also sometimes you will go to your college there are people who will give the valedictory address you know they will stand on the podium and they will talk to all those graduating students also a lots of big people do that they are expressing their love it is a kind of an attachment but now look at the same thing attachments are time bound very very much time bound they do not last for a very long time they come and they go 
they do what is called the yo-yo you know in life the attachments come and they go look at your own life when you were a kid you were attached to your parents when you were in school you were attached to your friends in school or your teachers when you went to college you were attached to your college friends and teachers again then you got married or then you got a job so when you got a job you were attached to the first job then something happened over there you left that and you went to the next one then you got attached to the second job and then you left that and you went to the third one can you see how flimsy this kind of an attachments are marriage you are attached to your wife or your spouse rather this attachment is again temporary it doesn't last for a very long time because the attachments get spread out with the children coming in the picture you have your relatives which you acquire from outside your spouse's relatives becomes your relatives then you have your set of friends sometimes you have your drinking pals sometimes you have your you know people who go and play so games clubs everywhere we develop a kind of an attachment and that attachment is so flimsy it goes away in just an instant so ved vyas says the love with the firm attachment to the lord you see you can have this attachment right at birth we are going to do one story where the attachment starts right at the beginning of life at the end not now so this attachment become so firm you have heard about adi shankaracharya now adi shankaracharya was devoted to god right from the beginning of his life he left his mother's place at the age of 8 traveled went to his guru's place at the age of 16 he traveled more he got an extension of another 16 more years in his life and then he traveled more and finally he came back to karnataka where he established the ashram over here the matha as they call it so there are four major mats which he established now his attachment was to the lord he was completely devoted to god so ved vyas says the worship of god with deep love when you worship the lord with deepest of the love what do you do meera bai's love can be also expressed like that she had a small statue of krishna which she carried all over the place singing songs bhajans kirtans you know literally all over the town there are various other sages and saints who used to travel exactly like her in case of gurudevs you know sai baba was a guru his devotee went all over the town singing his praises you will find there are various these kind of examples where to express the deep love and the devotion to god they are focused completely in him so ved vyas's way is expression of love in the form of a worship you have to worship the lord are these things related to what other sages say well if you look at the other sages some of the sages may be just sitting in one place dwelling on the lord they may not express anything 
they may write some things so this is the first kind of an expression which we are learning from ved vyas he said the worship of the lord with deep love and firm attachment to him when you have this attachment to the lord with the deepest of the love that is the way ved vyas considers devotional aspect so we move to verse 17 that is the sutra 17 we are going to hear about maharishi garg now you will try to understand what is the difference between these different different sages how do they react to it this is sutra 17 a great attachment to listening to the stories of his glories etc is bhakti according to maharishi garg that is garg muni says you have to listen to the stories of the lord now if you remember ved vyas we were just discussing about him he has written those stories his son was reciting them continuously to parikshit so that means there is a difference between these two one is talking about bhakti which is completely different he says you have to in the devotional aspect you have to worship the lord now gargamuni says no you have to listen to the stories of the lord <laughs> do you see any difference in that the difference lies in like this whenever somebody comes and asks me this question i want to be on the path of spiritual what is the first thing that i am supposed to do now most of the people think that i am going to put them on some path of meditation or some such kind of a thing i tell them no whether you do meditation or yoga one thing you should know you are you can never overcome the mind never this was established by vashishta muni long ago when shri ram comes to vashishta muni and he has completed his training okay and shri ram comes to vashishta muni and says you know what i have overcome my mind and vashishta muni laughs at him and he says you see if somebody comes and tells me that he has lifted the entire himalayan range you know the mountains i will believe in that person if somebody comes and says that i have drunk all the oceans in the world i will still believe in him but if somebody says that they have overcome the mind i will not believe in them now who is telling whom think vashishta muni is telling shri ram now shri ram is an avatar of the lord himself and yet he is being told this thing by his gurudev now this is a big dark to me isn't it you will say how can the lord get you know carried away by this thing you see the whole story is there after that isn't it sita gets kidnapped he cries for his brother yeah, you have heard this story you know lakshman is hurt he cries for him and then uh, hanuman ji gets the mountain the entire mountain because he doesn't know what is sanjeevani booty so he gets the entire mountain so he is crying for that how can you overcome the mind even if the lord is born on this earth till he is controlled by this body anybody who is in the body cannot overcome the mind so if if somebody comes and asks me this question that can i do yoga sana or can i do pranayama or can i do meditation my simple answer to them is i'm sorry you will not be able to overcome your mind 
period to overcome the mind is not easy then what is the answer the answer is bhakti marg path of devotion there is no need to overcome the mind there is no need to do anything for that matter just be in love with the lord that's it and here we are trying to understand what is this love all about so when people come i tell them very simply can you read stories i have had very great diggajis coming in you know, great people coming to me and saying you know guruji i have no all the stories i have read from wikipedia to everything oh is it yes the encyclopedia of sages and sin i have read everything is it so what is the next thing that you want to do i want to learn tantra i want to learn advaita i want to learn this and i want to learn that i humor them definitely see i have to humor everybody because a person who comes and says to me na i can overcome the mind i have to humor them so when i have to humor them i have to tell them okay fine i will teach you chalo let us learn tantra a little bit now please don't misunderstand tantra doesn't mean all about the wrong stuff okay it is <laughs> i am talking about completely different stuff <laughs> so we go one book another book sometimes the arrogance and the ego of the person is so strong yes i finish this book i'll go to the next one then i go to the next one and then i wow i myself don't know the books <laughs> it is the stupidest thing on earth to do what is the easiest thing to do gargamuni do you know who he is he is the guy who gave the name to krishna i don't know whether you know about this you see he was the priest you know yashoda and so he came over there and he gave the name and he did the entire chart you know drawing the chart the ephemeris oh what do you call that the nettle chart of sri krishna and told his father your son is going to become a very great guy krishna was going to become a very great guy <laughs> so understand this this gargamuni this is the person we are talking about and what he says he says can you just go and read and simply enjoy the stories and that is the reason i don't want to do any tough books some people who will say na can we do the upanishads i tell them you know it is going to give you a headache and if this simple lessons like you know i am doing uddhav gita i am doing bhagavad gita that gives you a headache can you imagine upanishad how much of a headache it's going to be first you got a mind of 25 paisa you know not even 25 paisa maybe 5 paisa worth of mind if others are there you know maybe 5 cents or i don't know what you call it a pence that is all the mind that you have the brain you know how much can you have in that only little knowledge and you want to learn the entire thing it's not possible simplest thing to do is to read the stories and to dwell in them so how do i give my satsangs i tell stories continuously if you are sitting in my satsang you will come to know i just keep on giving stories after stories after stories after stories stories are the easiest to digest they will tell you during my time you know when i was young people had by hearted the entire dialogues of shole they will tell you exactly what shole was all about after that came other movies and people knew the dialogues of that also like munna by mbbs everybody knows the dialogue it's a story it's a simple story and the story is put forward to a simple mind a mind which gets carried away by maya we get lost in this world so gargamuni says the simplest thing for anybody to do is to just 
go and read the stories a great attachment to the listening of the stories of his glories is bhakti devotion grows when a person listens to the stories of the lord when there are young children what do we do we tell them stories of bal krishna you know or shri ram when he was a kid he wanted the moon <laughs> how do you get the moon so it's like that we have to talk about this kind of simple stories now you will say that oh the story is repeated don't you think this is the same one which i saw uh, they are mentioning in the buddhist the buddhism also gives the same story the hinduism that also gives the same story every story looks the same of course the stories are going to be the same what makes you think they are going to be different you know if you ask any person how many kinds of stories are there there are only few that is why people when they are asked you know whether shakespeare was one person or many pers- many people <laughs> so there is a big question mark because how can a person write in so many different different kinds of stories he wrote tragedy comedy this that everything a story can be just a very simple way of expressing something and we love to watch movies isn't it we love to watch movies nowadays everybody is sitting at home and doing what they are watching netflix they are watching now durdarshan is starting what ramayan once again you know ramayan is literally like an extended version i mean now that now when you are sitting in my satsang i think you are understanding a little bit you know one verse goes on for 15 minutes like that it's not 15 minutes 15 minutes it is extended version Ooh, stretch it our stories are exactly like that we love to stretch our stories we can put so many elements this one that one make a nice khichdi of it and give you love stories i love stories everybody loves stories and especially the indian stories are very colorful you know why indian stories are very colorful because we have a lot of song and dance colorful dances suddenly in the middle of somewhere you will land up in switzerland somebody in the middle of somewhere you land up in japan i mean how can a person who is staying in chennai suddenly land up in japan you know today to you can't even go but this heroes and heroines they are dancing in some great place here there and suddenly there i feel tower is behind the person and then suddenly there is a you know the london the tower of london is there i seen one picture suddenly from one place to the other it went to peru okay how did that hero and the heroine land up in peru i don't know it is very difficult for me to go to that place also hmm? but yeah our stories are fantastic no brainer as we call them no brainer don't even keep use your brains the language is also very very different is not going to win an oscar but it's going to be popular everybody likes it that recently they came out with that film 2 years or 3 years ago i don't remember bahubali part 1 part 2 now i think they will part i don't know how many more parts they will come up with and we love those kind of pictures because you know what song dance beautiful dresses i mean just imagine the heroine is going to wear beautiful dresses and nobody knows where the dresses have come from nobody knows how many 25 30000 dancers behind you where did they come from there is no brainer correct we love this kind of thing so gargamuni is qualified in telling us you should listen to the stories because there is going to be a lot of masala in it you know masala movies we have so exactly like that full 
70 millimeters stereophonic sound nowadays it's not stereophonic it's some some other sound is there and you keep on hearing it from here there everywhere yeah you love all that a 3d vision god knows all those things right they, they made some some of these westerners also made movies like india only like this avatar i don't know what avatar is all about avatar hamare hindi mein bolte avatar avatar Okay, they made avatar with those blue color guys. Okay, Krishna is blue. You know, yesterday only we were discussing blue hai ki gray hai patai nahi. So yeah, you make those characters and have a beautiful setting. Only thing they didn't have was song and dance. We will tell Steven Spielberg next time you do now you please add two three songs over there. Let them dance. One will dance on one moon and somebody will dance on. Maybe they will do. we will tell uh, even elon musk to give one aircraft of this so he will dance on that also wow it, it will be very funny but you will love it so gargamuni's way of saying we need to listen to the stories of the lord most of them are concocted versions don't worry they are very good hmm understand how much is the essence of the truth in them it is not how much is the essence of the truth it is what you get out of it we love to hear stories because we get something out of it especially the stories of the lord when we listen to them we get carried away in devotion to the lord we get come completely immersed in them just like in a big movie theater we get immersed in the movie like that when the stories are going on people get immersed in it that is why gargamuni's way of saying that devotion can be got by listening to the stories of the lord so now we go to the next sage So Sutra 18 from the Narad Bhakti Sutra. What does it say? The devotion for Lord, which is not opposed to attachment to the inner self, is true devotion. Now he is gone in completely different direction. See, remember the first person said one thing, second person said stories, the third person is going completely in third direction. Now don't think that they are all wrong. Okay, everybody, like I said, you know, you have your own opinions. They also have their opinions. and everybody is free to give their opinion who is right everybody is right did i not say that even ram had to cry for his wife he also did he also had love for her that is why he did so it's okay everything is fine all is well all is well you remember the movie you no know? all is well all is well it's like that everything is well fine so what does shandaliya muni say he says the devotion for god which is not opposed to attachment to the inner self is true devotion ah this is a little complicated right you see he is defining devotion in a different manner now who is the one who is running after self 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 the person who wants to become self realized this is one one very special way of understanding this self realization is actually opposed to devotion you see realizing the self is one part of the deal how is it self you go inwards right you go inwards you become a buddha kind of a buddha when you recognize or realize the self what do you understand you understand that everything is the self only isn't it nothing is the non self is i guess there is no non self everything is the self is there something called non self they explain it there is a non self also okay so don't dispute it like i said we have to agree to everything all is well hmm so <laughs> in self realization 
you are going to do om and all those kind of stuff okay you are going to go in deep meditation and all that kind of thing so he says it is not opposed to attachment to the inner self is true devotion it is not opposed we are not even going to oppose anything finally at the end of the day i am still going to tell you whatever chandalya muni says or or garga muni says or whoever says narada has got a completely different say also all right so let us wait for him to say so here he says somebody does idol worship somebody says i am going to go and pray to god somebody no 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 you go and sit in one place and think about the self today you have got a lot of time to think about that you know one is you are not even sure about your job so you are going to be very selfish in thinking about yourself isn't it you are you are thinking about where is the money going to come from and no president or prime minister is going to give me money because i don't fall under that category so you are going to think about your small self not going to think about the big self all right so today you have got time to do thinking so here he says attachment to the inner self the self which you need to achieve in terms of realization small technique how you normally achieve that first you remove all the things which are opposing to it just keep on removing and when you come to the aspect of removing everything then you start filling it up with that huh the same thing which you remove you fill it up with that means what so you just keep on asking is this god no is that god no is that god no is that god no so if you look at an idol and say is that god the answer is no that's an idol and after you come to the whole understanding is the god from which angle do you look like god also you will think are which angle do i look like no finally you will come to this understanding god lives in me right so god lives in everything including that stone idol including the person whom you are thinking he is the biggest idiot on earth you know he is living in everything so finally you fill the whole thing up first you remove and then you fill it up with the whole thing and then from neti you come to iti neti means not this and then you come to iti means all is this so these are different techniques i i don't advise any of these things because first and foremost Ah, uh, to sit in one place and think about all these things is going to take a lot of time. Okay, and coronavirus may not give us that much of time. It is going to give us a short duration of time to think about all those things. You know, it, let us not become a saint by that. But we can listen to these stories, no? So here he says, when you do this, this true devotion. He says you should not oppose to the attachment to the inner self. the inner self is also god god is everywhere and god is inside also and when you think of that god and get attached to this whole thing that is also a part of it so we don't want to oppose chandilya muni also why should we oppose him so let us move to the next one who is the next one next one is devrishi narad the book that we are reading he only has written this okay so we do the sutra 19 according to devrishi narad total dedication of all actions at the altar of the lord and at all moments of forgetfulness of the lord excruciating pangs is supreme love divine which is called bhakti well narada has a different say but is narada say correct he is just giving you different different views it is his view we accept it but he is not saying you have to be firm on this view please don't be firm on this view there are other views also which we are going to look at hmm? so narada's way of saying that how is this bhakti established how is this devotion established he says dedication to all actions at the altar of the lord yesterday do you remember me telling you that whatever action that you do you have to devote it to the lord 
that means you are the servant of god god is going to act through you this is what i told you right he uses you to get the work done this is what i said so he says dedicate all the actions to the lord i will explain this and when you forget and all moments of forgetfulness of the lord excruciating pangs you are going to feel a lot of upset when you do not think like that well what happens over here have you listened to the sufi you know the rumi or one of those guys who write all the sufi songs he talks about love and what kind of love is he talking about a man and a woman a boy and a girl those kind of things you know but is he actually talking of that or is he talking about the love for god sufism is all expression of the love for god so all these poems that are there all these beautiful verses that are there they are related only to god so he says narada says very clearly everything you just dedicate it to the lord now this is a simple example you know you listen to a lot of movie songs take any movie song which is a love song most of these arijit singhs and all these you know these are love songs go and check them out and go and listen to the songs and instead of having your girlfriend in front of you think there is the lord in front of you and sing that same song to the lord you know it turns into a very beautiful love song for the lord so did you get what he is trying to say he is just trying to say dedicate all actions to the lord which means what simple answer yesterday if you recollect what i said single pointed devotion to the lord and every other person in the periphery attachment only to one and detachment from everything else this is what i said you have to do your material worldly jobs with one hand meanwhile being dedicated and devoted to the lord this is what i said how do you do that think if you are a servant of the lord how will you do that work you are a servant you are doing all the job of the master it is very beautifully explained in one of the stories of ramkrishna paramahansa where he says there is a woman who comes from the village to calcutta and works in a very rich household she works in a very rich household and there is a small boy in that household so every day she would give him bath and put his clothes on and do all kinds of stuff for the small child she would sing songs to him she would be dedicated so much to that child that it seemed like she was so much in love with that child what was she actually doing remember this is a woman who had left her village and come to the city to do the job when she was giving the bath to her child that boss's child the owner's son she was thinking about her own son in the village and when she was giving water you know putting water on top of the the baby she was thinking about her own son how she would be bathing him so when she applied all the you know whatever Johnson baby powder. Maybe that time it was not there, but think like that. Just imagine. She's applying all that. She's putting that kajal. Ah, in olden times we used to put kajal so that in a kisi ki nazar na lag jaye. 
in the evil eye should not fall so they will put that one kajal in the eye and one dot somewhere so so she would do all that to that small baby over there the master's child thinking about her own baby in the village which she had left behind and there are many women in this world and men in this world who have done that so thinking like that dedicating the action to the lord so when you are taking care of your own family think that the person that you are taking care of is the child of the lord so suppose you are attending to this your own son think that that is not your son but the son is the father in heaven's son krishna's child so if it is krishna's child and you are the servant how will you take care of him if you have a job think that that job is being given by krishna himself how will you do that job if krishna has given the job to you don't you think you will want to put 100% into it the love that you may have for your wife or your husband they are also children of god will you not love them that way so consider everything in this world belongs to krishna himself and then do that job dedicatedly even if you are giving money to your parents or taking care of old parents think that they are not your parents but they are the children of god they are krishna's children and you are just serving krishna by taking care of them did you get it it's a very simple way of looking at it the whole place is not yours never take ownership of anything if you have a farm there are very beautiful trees growing over there you see you have divided the farm into different different you know this is my farm that is this this one's farm that is that one's farm but this whole earth this universe belongs to the lord you have only taken a small portion of it so that you can take care of it isn't it in many places in india you will find that there are people zamindars are still there by the way they they are the owners of land and they have given the land to somebody to till what do they do after they work the whole year in that land they take the entire whatever the crop that comes and gives it to the owner of the field retaining a certain small portion so do they take the ownership of that place no they think that it belongs to that zamindar or that person in charge whoever is the owner of that land isn't that how they do it so think like that you are just a worker in the field you are doing the job for krishna it is krishna's land so you better work very hard for it it is krishna's job krishna has given that job to you so you work very hard for it those are krishna's children you better take care good care of them because you are just a servant narada's actions were exactly like this so his way of telling you how to progress in this field is exactly like this so he says that total dedication of all action at the altar of the lord and at all moments of forgetfulness of the lord excruciating pangs the moment it comes to your mind that i am you know this is my field i am working in my field i am not doing anybody a favor sorry you should feel the pain these are my parents i have to take care no 
they are god's children okay you are just a servant doing the job if you forget this you should experience the pain that i have done something wrong you got what i'm saying you have to do this job in this world dedicating it to the lord even the job that you are doing one day you feel lazy you don't want to do it you just want to you know run away somewhere maybe go for a movie or i don't know in the future not now corona virus is going on maybe in the future you know one day you'll say four days i'll take an off and i'll go think it's not your job you have been given a job and you have to do it 100% dedicatedly to the lord alone and if this is the way you look at it then according to narada this is called love divine or devotion to god did you get it so these are different different aspects 1 2 3 4 different aspects garga muni says something chandalya muni says something vyas dev says something narada says something everybody has a different way of looking at the same object called devotion different parts and these different parts can be followed by all of you anybody who can just feel like that can follow that path you can read story books if you want to you can consider that you are working for god become a devotee of god and just work for him you are doing everything you are doing nobody a favor you are not doing it for yourself you are doing it for the children of god whichever way you look at it do it you will experience the devotion for the lord so we have come till verse 19 today and we will stop over here doing the book but again like i said it is story time <laughs> today we are going to learn a very beautiful story of a very young girl One day, her father and mother take her to Pandharpur. She is just seven years old, seven years old. So when she reaches Pandharpur, she takes the darshan of Panduranga. Now, when she takes the darshan of Panduranga, she goes madly in love with him. and she tells her parents i don't want to go anywhere i just want to sit here and she sits at the door of panduranga vithala and just cries her heart out she is just crying and crying and crying and crying she is just madly in love with god she doesn't know what she is supposed to do and she just roams around later on outside she seems to be lost now do you recollect our previous stories namdev <laughs> so we bring namdev into the picture once again namdev is roaming around over there he sees this young girl crying he asks sir what is wrong with you she says i don't want to leave pandarpur and go you see my parents they have gone i think i want to stay here only and i want to serve the lord Remember Namdev is a great devotee of Panduranga. Now she is a 7 8 year old girl. So she asks whether she can stay in Pandarpur and Namdev takes her to his parents and they agree to keep her. She is supposed to do some amount of work at home. Now this work which she is supposed to do is take care of everything, you know. bring the water from the river clean the cow shed make some food she so she stays in the outhouse and she would work every day 
Now every day when she was working, she grows up. Did I tell you her name? Her name was Zanabai. Zanabai. Well, English if you say J A N A B A I. Janabai. So Zanabai, Marathi. So Zanabai would every day cook food. One day it so happens that she had cooked a very nice meal. And Panduranga comes over there. Do you remember Namdev used to eat with Panduranga? So one day Panduranga comes over there. Now she is a servant girl, so she is outside the house. Do you remember seven year when she was seven years old? She was madly in love with Panduranga, and here Panduranga has come to her house, and he is having food with those people. She is outside in her hut. and she's crying away to glory panduranga gets very upset he says i don't want to take this food so namdev asks him why what happened so namdev also stops eating his parents everybody stops eating they ask panduranga what exactly happened he says my devotee is outside she's crying i want to sit and eat with her so he goes to eat with her now every day it would so happen that zanabai would do her work and then go back to her house now we have that grinding you know grist mill as we call it the grinding quern so she would be grinding it for the next day to make the food panduranga would come and sit with her and he would be grinding for her meanwhile she would be singing songs one day it so happens that it becomes so intoxicating for panduranga that he gets lost in her songs he forgets to go when the doors of that temple opens <laughs> he has come from the temple to meet her in the night remember this and there she is singing songs to him and he's got totally intoxicated in her songs that he has forgotten that morning everybody is going to wake up the lord over there <laughs> and there is nobody over there so she tells him lord it is getting late you have to go and what happens is remember he is grinding isn't it so he leaves behind his necklace and his pair of clothes and there is a piece of cloth which belongs to zanabai he just ties it in his hair and just runs to the temple so when they open the temple doors next morning they see that his necklace is missing it's a golden diamond necklace it is missing and whose cloth is this this belongs to zanabai so the entire town gathers outside her door and when they open the door they see the necklace lying on the floor she is incarcerated she is taken and they want to drown her so when they want to drown her what happens to her is they try to put her in the river or they try to throw some stones or something like that and suddenly these stones or these things that they were trying to throw they become water in their hands they realize the importance of this great sage zanabai and they beg pardon from her and they let her go sant nyaneshwar if you remember yesterday again i was telling you about him sant nyaneshwar would also keep on visiting panduranga now one day panduranga is standing over there and 
Zanabai is singing the songs. Remember, she used to sing beautiful Abanga songs. Now she is lost in her world. Now Santanyaneshwar is coming from there, and he sees Panduranga is writing those words down. So he asks him, "What are you doing, Panduranga?" Oh, I am just writing the words down. He says, "She is singing songs to you." Why are you writing them down? She is in love with you. She is singing songs to you. Why are you writing the songs down? They are your songs. He says, "You don't understand. Don't disturb her. Don't disturb her. I love to listen to these songs, and I want to see these words. They are literally love incarnate. And this is the truth about Zanabai." her songs made even the lord cry do you get the amount of devotion and love that she had that even the lord was working with her now like i said these are stories you may say you know what are these stories you are telling me but these are the stories which increases the devotion to the lord do you remember the sage telling you that you have to listen to the stories did you see the kind of love that was there and this love is unimaginable this is the unconditional love for the lord everything that janabai did was for god she would sing songs and churn that kwan and that is the devotion that you need to have that is what even narada is saying whatever action that you do dedicate it to the lord only so we have come to the end of our satsang i hope you all have enjoyed it i take care of yourself and i will see you all tomorrow bye